I'm the Amazing Atheist, and I'm happy. Ask me why. Go ahead, ask me. Well, I'm glad you asked. I'm currently reading this book, Lies and the Lying Liars Who Tell Them, A Fair and Balanced Look at the Right, by Al Franken. He was a comedian, now he's a senator, and one of the very few senators who has any integrity whatsoever, in my humble opinion. This book is great propaganda. If you're a left-wing socialist who hates freedom as much as I do, then this book is really going to get you riled up. After reading just a few pages of Mr. Franken's book, sorry, Senator Franken's book, I wanted to go out and beat conservatives with a baseball bat. I mean, you know, have a reasoned discourse with them. Right. Sure, th that's what I mean. So, I was sitting around in my huge, palatial Massachusetts estate, wondering how to screw over the middle class like us socialist liberals do, and I started getting a sensation inside my chest. I thought it was indigestion at first, but then I realized it was Allah, the Lord Allah, because, you know, us atheists and liberals are all secret Muslims, of course. Amazing atheist, I want you to pwn a conservative. Pwn a conservative? But how? All of the facts are on their side. Too bad, figure it out. We need to pwn them. They keep pwning us. Ann Coulter, Glenn Beck, Sean Hannity, Rush Limbaugh, they all make such stunningly logical arguments that we just can't refute them. So Allah basically said it's up to me. I have to be the one liberal on earth who can pwn a conservative. But how am I supposed to do that? Because us liberals, all we know how to do is lie. So I found a conservative. I'm not going to tell you his name or show you his face, but we'll call him Conservative X. And this is what he has to say about me. The Amazing Atheist has no clue whatsoever. First off, uh, there's a video called A Conservative Protest or Stupid by the Amazing Atheist. Wow. Is that all you can come up with? They're stupid? You can't come up with anything else? You can't explain why they're wrong? Damn it! You're right. I can't explain why they're wrong. I just said they were stupid and provided no explanation whatsoever. Let's roll a clip from my explanation-free video. They're going to march on Washington and they're going to complain about taxes being too high, even though our taxes are among the lowest in the industrialized world. But that doesn't matter. They don't let truth get in the way of the clever narrative that they've crafted where Obama is a Kenyan socialist who has come to strip us of our freedoms and of our money. You know, to the untrained eye and the untrained ears, what you've just witnessed might resemble <laughs> an explanation. So who are you going to believe, folks? The trustworthy conservative guy or your lying eyes and your lying ears? All right, you first off mentioned that 11.9% uh, is, is our tax rate. We have an 11.9% tax rate. Or are you joking me? We have 35%. We have 50%, depending on what state you live in. Uh, yeah, well, the taxes that you pay are also contingent upon how much money you made, how much money you spent, how much property you own, are you married, do you have children, and so on and so forth. We have a progressive tax system. Everyone understands this. And because we have a progressive tax system, it's easy for people to fudge the numbers for political purposes. Now here is a chart that shows the mean income tax in the year 2005 as a percentage of income by country. Now you'll notice that the United States does have legitimately high corporate tax rates. But our personal tax rates are among the lowest in the industrialized world. My argument is simply this. We pay less in taxes than most industrial countries. Now, if you want to investigate and try to find some statistics out there that contradict that, then I welcome you to do so. But you're going to have a pretty hard time of it because they just don't exist. We have a very high tax rate, if you think about it, and if you are willing to work hard. If you're being willing to be lazy, you know, we have a system that, uh, that penalizes productivity, and we have a system that just uh, says, you know what, if you don't want to work, you don't have to. You can live on the beach, smoke pot, and get welfare checks. Hmm, that's an interesting perspective from a 15-year-old making a YouTube video from his parents' living room. Why don't you share that viewpoint with this guy? 
one of the many people living in the socialist paradise that you describe. Yeah, a ask uh, this guy how many times he's been uh, smoking pot on the beach, waiting for his welfare check to come from Uncle Sam. Or maybe this lady, yeah, she's just another example of one of these, these leeches that lives a life of ease, thanks to the uh, back-breaking labor of the average, hard-working American. A very interesting worldview, and I know exactly where you got that worldview. Yeah, you got that from uh, the Drudge Report, you got that from World Net Daily, you got that from reading conservative blogs all over the internet. Here, here's a suggestion from, from me to you. The next time you want to assess uh, reality, walk out your door and ask yourself, what objectively do I see here when I look at this place? So you should do that. You should take a little walk for five or six years and then get back to me. Okay? Okay. Other countries have a much higher, we have the lowest tax rate, we have the second highest capital gains tax, man. Can't you get that through your head? Can I get that through my head? Let me try. I'll, I'll give it a shot. Okay, the U.S. has the second highest capital gains tax in the world. Get it in your stupid skull, you dumbass. You need to know that the U.S. has the second highest capital gains tax. You know what I think the problem might be? Reality. The U.S. does not have the second highest capital gains tax. That would make us, um, uh, 11th, actually. Oh, do we have to be like everybody else? Maybe we have a little lower of a tax rate. Do we have to be like everybody else? No, no, we don't have to be like everybody else. You just think we have to be like that because you think European nations are superior. I don't think this. No, I don't think European countries are better. I know they're better. Now, I don't know they're better in some kind of nebulous sense, like some sort of inherent God-given greatness. But I know that according to the data, according to the raw statistics, yes, they're better. I'll give you some examples. According to the Central Intelligence Agency, that's the CIA, the United States ranks 46th in infant mortality. That means that 45 countries are better at keeping their newborns alive than we are. The thing that most amuses me is that we're actually getting beat by Taiwan. That's right, when it comes to keeping newborn infants alive, Taiwan is handing the United States its ass. What about the Human Development Index? How do we rank there? Human Development Index takes three things into account. The life expectancy of a person at birth, so longevity. The education of the population, which is determined by adult literacy rates and university enrollments. And the gross domestic product per capita. Where do we rank on this list? Well, we're number 13. That means it's better to live in the United States of America than pretty much any other country on the planet. But you know what? Most of the countries that are ahead of us happen to be European countries. Well, okay, so we might not be the best off, but damn it, we're the happiest! Okay, we're not the happiest. We rank 13th in happiness, too. But hey, at least we're tied with France, right? The World Health Organization says that we're 37th in healthcare. But hey, there is at least one thing that we're still number one at. We still have the highest prison population per capita of any other country on the planet. So yeah, at least in that sense, we're number one. We're number one. We're number one in restricting freedom. And you know, the Tea Party protests aren't saying our taxes are so much higher than people in Europe and Japan and things like that. We're saying that our taxes are too high. Our problem is not that we're taxed too much. Our problem is that our taxes are not applied to the right things. Our military budget is bloated and insane, and yet we don't have universal health care. Which, by the way, is why the World Health Organization rates us so low. If you ask people in a hospital, how they feel about health care in the US, you're not liable to get too many very flattering answers. Denmark, Finland, Austria, the Netherlands, Luxembourg, France, Belgium, Ireland, Germany, Sweden, the United Kingdom, Canada, and Spain. 
What do all of these countries have in common? They all have a higher percentage of people satisfied with their health care system. In the United States, only 40% of the population are satisfied with the health care system. Yeah, I don't know what they do in Denmark to get 91% of people satisfied. They must just have some really hot nurses. You don't like your house. You don't like your house. Uh, you say it's too small. Yet you look over and say there's a bunch of houses that are smaller. You know, they, that, that sucks for them. But you know what the thing is? You know, it still sucks for me because I want a bigger house. How about that? Get that through your head. Oh, yeah, wow. What a beautiful and complex analogy. Yeah. Okay, let me, let me see if I can get this through my head because I'm, you know, stupid. Um, I have a house. And there's, there's some people with bigger houses. And I'm jealous of them. But there's also some people with smaller houses, and it sucks for them, but you know what? I still want a bigger house. And, uh, what you're analogizing here is the way that, um, uh, you know, because, like, the United States is, like, the medium house, and then the bigger house is the, um, the United States that could be if the Tea Party protesters get their way, and the smaller houses are other countries... No, no, wait, that, that doesn't make sense. Okay, the, the, the bigger house is the European countries, and the, the, this house is the United States, and the smaller houses are the... Um, hmm. Uh, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that upon uh, further reflection, that analogy doesn't make any sense whatsoever, and um, you should not make analogies ever again. All right, all right, and we're hey, so we're not campaigning that taxes are uh, we're campaigning that taxes are too high. Our taxes, that's pretty much simple. <laughs> taxes. White people don't like Obama. Well, you know, maybe, maybe that balances out because the white people who don't, who didn't vote, who didn't vote for Obama because he was black, balances out with the black people who would have voted Republican and the Spanish people who voted for him because he was black. It all balances out. You know what I really like about that statement? I like that nowhere in it do you deny that conservatives dislike Obama because he's black. I like that because it's basically a tacit admission that you yourself don't like Obama because he's black. You've just admitted that you're a racist and you don't care because in your mind the favoritism shown to Obama by all the minorities in America is offsetting your racism. What is, what is different now that Obama is in control? Nothing. If anything, it should be the liberals taking to the streets and protesting against this president. You should love Obama because he is something that George Bush could never be. An articulate defender of the Bush doctrine. I mean, did you see his Nobel Prize speech? It was basically one giant defense of why America can be as imperialistic as it wants and there's nothing anyone can do about it. I blame Bush. I don't think Bush was a very good president. You know what? I, I can't blame him. Well, I'm glad that at least on that, we can agree. However, despite your insistence to the contrary, there were no Tea Party protests under George W. Bush. I still saw you guys driving around with George W. Bush stickers on the backs of your cars, so I don't know what the hell you're talking about. Sarah Palin recently spoke at a big Tea Party convention. Sarah Palin whose views are basically identical in every way to the views of George W. Bush. So if the Tea Party protesters were so anti-Bush and so against the way that Bush ran up the deficit, then why? Why do they embrace Sarah Palin, who basically agrees with everything Bush said, who was in fact the running mate of a man who voted with Bush over 90% of the time? It doesn't make any sense if you look at it from that perspective. Uh, okay, on the note of health care, you're saying that the protests are bad people because they don't want others to get health care? You're saying they're bad people? Yes, I am saying that they are bad people. You know, maybe it's because we don't want our health care system destroyed. Universal health care has been a success in other countries by any measure. Whether you're looking at the World Health Organization statistics or you're looking at the satisfaction of people who are in the system, universal health care works. That has been shown. 
The only way that you can say universal health care doesn't work is if you just ignore reality and substitute Fox News. We don't want government control in our health care. Maybe it's because we work hard and we don't want to see people who just smoke pot all day, criminals, getting health care. That's the second time you've brought up pot smokers in your videos as if, whoa, who is more evil than the pot smoker? Don't you realize that they're only criminals because the government has criminalized what they do? I mean, they're not inherently criminals by some sort of intrinsic standard that can be found in nature. They're criminals because the government declares them to be criminals. I find it interesting that you're willing to give the government the power to declare who is a criminal and who is not, but you're not willing to let them control medicine. How exactly are they controlling medicine? Do you think the government is going to be sitting around deciding who gets better and who doesn't? Uh, I think that the purpose of universal health care is actually to apply health care universally, which means that everyone gets coverage. What's wrong with that? How can you possibly make an argument against a system where everyone gets the medical treatment they need and in favor of a system where not everyone gets the medical treatment that they need? How can you possibly justify that position on a moral level other than just saying, we worked hard for the money and we're going to keep it, God damn it. Okay, so thousands of uninsured people have to die needlessly every year so that your family can have an extra $500 in its pocket annually? Okay. I hope that you're not insured and I hope you get sick and I hope you get to experience firsthand how terrible the United States healthcare system really is. Why is that guy poor, yet his twin brother, who worked really hard through high school and got into a good college, got a scholarship, and worked hard his whole life and now has health care, why do you think why do you think he has health care and the other brother doesn't who smoked weed the night before the SATs? Yeah. Yeah, that's really fair. That's really fair. Okay, so your argument is that there's two twin brothers and one of them is a crazy pot smoking party animal. And the other is your responsible Norman Rockwell wears a tie, went to college, doesn't have any fun, stiff upper lip, just, mm, yes, of course, I see, all right, I will solve this problem. And uh, they both get sick and, you know, one has health care and the other doesn't because one of them worked hard for his health care and the other is just, you know, this, this, this piece of crap who, ooh, he's just stupid. Let me just quickly point out several glaring, horrendous things that are wrong with this scenario. Number one, I like the fact that you made them twins so that they could have the same social and economic circumstances. But you know what? In real life, we're not all twins. Not everyone is born with the same advantages or disadvantages. Some people have good parents, some people don't. Some people go to good schools, some people don't. Some people are born smart and talented, some people are born anything but. So the starting line is not not in the same place for everyone. Second of all, it is extremely possible to be a hard-working American who does not have health insurance. I know plenty of them. Third of all, under a universal health care system, both of these men would get the same treatment. They would both be equal in the eyes of the medical establishment. What you're really arguing for is that some people deserve to die because they're not hard enough workers. Now that sounds like communism to me. That sounds like something Stalin would say. Yeah, I killed 12 million people, but they weren't doing enough for the system. So you want to talk about who really wants to socialize medicine? I think you guys are the ones that want to socialize medicine by basically saying that if you don't work hard enough, if you don't put enough into the system, then we don't care about you. We don't want to help you. So it basically boils down to this. In your system, one brother has to die. In my system, both brothers get to live. I win, checkmate, end of discussion. For welfare. I want government jobs that pay a couple dollars an hour, two, three dollars an hour, and that'll replace welfare, cleaning up streets, things like that. It's a fair thing. It's a fair idea. Okay, so you want the government to pay people two or three dollars an hour uh, to do menial labor that currently people are getting paid a lot more for. So not only do you want to basically turn people into wage slaves who are so busy doing government busy work that they can't look for real jobs, but not only that, you want the government to undercut the jobs of the people who are already doing that work for a far higher salary. 
I mean, what sort of idiotic alternate dimension do you live in where this sounds like a good idea? Things, the things are bad? Because you know what? Because we have lazy... It's because we have too many fat people who just are saying, Oh, 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 well, we are, we got a, we got an awful system. We, we, we're, we have too many fat people. You know, allow... Uh, okay, okay, I I'm done picking on Rain Man, you guys. This is kind of getting silly. Fat people. Okay, okay. We get it, kid. Settle down. Go eat some Cheerios or something. Just put your empty little head on your pillow and go night night. Okay? That's what you got to do. And stop making videos, cause you're really not that good at it. Okay. If you like this video, please favorite it. And by the way, we are still raising money for free speech vids. The link is in the description section. I hope that you guys can find it in your wallets to donate. Uh, thank you very kindly. Amazing Atheist.